Congrats on your purchase of the Raceface Turbine Dropper. Follow these straightforward install instructions for smooth post operation. Tools required to install your turbine dropper post include a cable cutter, hex key wrench set, and a 10 mm socket. This is what is included with your turbine dropper post. Here's what is included with the one by lever, which is sold separately. Step one, cable routing. Route cable housing as per bike frame manufacturer's instructions. Have no ferrules on either end of the cable at this point. Step two, actuation assembly install. Remove the short length of cable housing and discard. Install cable seal nut onto the cable housing. Position the T-nut into the actuation assembly. Thread the T-nut onto the cable housing. Hold the housing and twist the actuation assembly clockwise onto the housing till the T-nut bottoms out. Step 3. Determining cable housing length. This involves a dry fit of the post on the housing without a cable to determine the housing length. Screw in the grub screws using a 2mm hex until flush with the actuation assembly. Hold actuation assembly and slide bottom of the post over the assembly. Hold the actuation assembly static and rotate the post clockwise till it bottoms out. Finger tight, no tools required. Now slide the cable seal nut up the housing and over the assembly and turn that nut clockwise to thread it into the bottom of the post. Again, finger tight, no tool required. While installing your post into the frame, pull the excess cable out of your frame towards your bars. Not too tight, but leave no excess in the frame. Set the seat post to your desired climbing height and tighten the seat post clamp. Align the housing on the bar at your preferred lever location and now turn the bars fully left or right depending on your lever location. Trim the housing at this length and place a ferrule on the cockpit side of the freshly trimmed housing. Now it's time to remove the post from the bike. Unscrew cable seal nut by holding post static and turning the nut counterclockwise. Next, hold the actuation assembly static and turn the post counterclockwise to remove the assembly. Use your 2mm hex wrench to wind out the grub screws. Step 4. Install the shifting cable. There will be separate procedures for the universal remote and the one by lever. Feed your shift cable through the cable opening in the lever. Now feed the cable through the noodle, making sure the noodle is correctly orientated. Feed the complete cable through the housing till it is fully through to the other side. Take note of any excess friction while threading that shift cable through. If you do feel any friction, recheck the cable housing routing as there may be an issue. Feed your shift cable through the cable opening in the lever. Feed the complete shifting cable through the housing till it is fully through to the other side. Take note of any excess friction while threading that shift cable through as there may be an issue. Step 5. Installing cable into actuation assembly. Guide shift cables through the T-nut and the top of the actuation assembly. Pull remaining cables through the actuation assembly till tight. Now set the top of the T-nut to be lined up with the line on the actuation assembly. Tighten the grub screws evenly with the 2mm hex, making sure the outer edge of the grub screws are completely flush with the actuation assembly cylinder. Using your cable cutters, trim the excess shifter cable from the top of the assembly. Leave a maximum of 2mm of cable showing. Step 6. Installing actuation assembly into post. Slide the bottom of post over the actuation assembly. Hold the assembly static and rotate the post clockwise to thread into the post till it bottoms out. Finger tight, no tool required. Now slide the cable seal nut up the housing and onto the post. Turn that nut clockwise to thread into the post. Again, finger tight, no tools required. Step 7. Inserting post into frame. While inserting the post into the seat tube, pull excess cables through the bike from the front end. Set the seat post to your desired climbing height and tighten the seat post clamp. Do not over tighten as it can have a serious effect on proper post operation. Step 8. Installing remote lever. Note there are separate procedures for installing the universal and one by remotes. Remove the remote lever clamp bolt with a 3mm hex. Open the clamp and place the clamp around the handlebar in the desired location. Close the lever clamp and insert the bolt back into the clamp. 
Now use that trusty 3mm hex again to tighten the clamp to the bar. Set lever rotational position before tightening remote lever fully. Attach the lever assembly to the clamp. Note there are two reach positions available. Choose the one that is best suited for you. Set lever rotational position before tightening remote lever fully. Step 9. Setting cable tension. Please note there will be separate procedures for the universal and one by levers. Wiggle the universal remote lever to determine if the required 2 to 3 millimeters of cable slack is present. If more cable tension is required, then turn that barrel adjuster outward until you achieve the required cable tension. If less cable tension is required, then turn that barrel adjuster inward until you achieve the required cable tension. Now that you've achieved the correct tension, you'll need to tighten the inner lock nut till it's flush with the barrel adjuster. Final step is to ensure you have a similar 2 to 3 millimeters of slack in the lever when the post is fully raised or lowered. Wiggle your one by lever to determine if the required 2 to 3 millimeters of cable slack is present. If more cable tension is required, then turn that barrel adjuster outward until you achieve the required cable tension. If less cable tension is required, then turn that barrel adjuster inward until you achieve the required cable tension. Final step is to ensure you have a similar 2 to 3 millimeters of slack in the lever when the post is fully raised or lowered. Step 10. Dropper post operation. Press on your remote lever to activate the dropper post to move freely within its travel range. Let go of the lever to activate the brake and stop the post at its desired position. Step 11. Air pressure adjustment. Air pressure controls the return action and speed of the turbine dropper post. Loosen and remove the seat clamp assembly. The air valve is located on the top of the seat clamp assembly. Remove the rubber protective cover to access the air valve. Remove air valve cap using a 10 mm socket. Use a digital shock pump to set the air pressure. The post is shipped, set at 30 psi. The air pressure range to run the post is 20 to 40 psi. You can raise or lower this air pressure value to change the return speed of the post. Now it's time to reinstall that valve cap with your 10 mm socket. Do not over tighten this cap. Reinstall rubber protective cover. Step 12. Saddle installation. Slide the saddle rails in between top and bottom seat post rail clamps. Now you can thread in your front and rear seat clamp bolts. Snug down the front and rear seat clamp bolts with a 4 mm hex. Position your saddle now in its correct fore aft position. Continue tightening the front and rear saddle clamp bolts evenly. To level your saddle, alternate between tightening the front or back bolts till the saddle is level. Check dropper post for correct operation and go ride your bike. Check this link to see these turbine dropper post instructions in a printable PDF format. If you're having issues with your posts that have not been remedied through these install instructions, please check this troubleshooting video to diagnose your issue.